Welcome to the first ever episode of Scroll Play. I'm your host, the human Floyd, but you, my dear viewers, can just call me Floyd. The weather in Tamriel today is cloudy with a chance of dark anchors. So what is Scroll Play? Well, it's a show about role-playing in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you don't know what role-playing is, or you're new to it, you should check out this video, which is my role-playing beginner's guide to the Elder Scrolls Online. This show is going to focus on discussion relating to the role-playing community. Uh, we'll have interviews with role-players. We'll talk about n official news coming from ZeniMax that relates to role-playing, um, and just the practice of role-play itself. This show's not going to be a super regular thing, unless I can get somebody to help me out with the editing and production of the series. I'm a guild leader of a role-playing guild myself. That takes up a lot of my free time. Uh, but if somebody out there has uh, Camtasia or Adobe Premiere or something like that and wants to help out with the production, uh, you should definitely hit me up at thehumanfloyd at gmail.com and we can talk about it. So, in today's episode... We are going to be interviewing Haloran, who is the guild leader of a Daggerfall Covenant role-playing guild called Prelude. But before the interview, I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about an upcoming role-playing event that I'm hosting. The Battle of Canarthi's Roost is a cross-faction role-play event, taking place in two acts. The first act will be on the Ebonheart Pact faction, starting at 3pm Eastern Daylight Time on August 3rd. The invading armies of Ebonheart loyalists will meet in Sunscale Strand in Shadowfen. The Shadowscales have captured a Dominion vessel which we will board and set sail to Canarthi's Roost from. There are enemy NPCs on the boat so that will be a little annoying while we roleplay, but with so many people aboard I don't think there will be much of a problem. The second act will take place on the Aldemary Dominion faction. Ebonheart players who pre-ordered will be able to create copies of their characters with a similar name. Those of you who didn't pre-order don't have the option to play any race on any faction, so you're encouraged to create Dominion Defenders to fight your Ebonheart Pact friends with. Additionally, several Aldemary Dominion roleplay guilds will be defending the island. Daggerfall Covenant players and guilds are more than welcome to come along as Carnarthy's Roost Defenders or Pact Raiders. This event will be like an emote fight but on a much larger scale. In order to keep things organized as possible, Attackers and defenders will be broken up into smaller, manageable squads. If you are attacking another player, I highly recommend you add attacking name to the end of each of your emotes to help make it clear who is fighting who. And remember, you don't get to decide if another character is wounded, hurt, or dead. That is up to the individual player. There's a lot more information in the link found in the video description. If you're a guild leader who wants to get involved, please post in the thread so we know who to contact with relevant information. Blood for the Pact. So make sure to click the link down in the description for the battle. Uh, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> Today in the show we're going to be talking about phasing. If you don't know what phasing is or don't know why it's a problem to role players, you should look at this video right around here somewhere and check it out. It's really short and it just explains the phasing issue. First, here's some footage from QuakeCon that is relevant to this discussion. Alright, so T the Khajiit, one of our favorite Khajiit role players, wants to know what do we have planned for role players in the future? Uh, so, uh, I, I did mention some things uh, there for role players. You know, I, I think anytime you have emergent gameplay uh, systems where you, you have things like uh, thieving and, and you know the, the player guard systems those are fun uh, but I also think uh, the things where players can reward other players uh, where players can uh, own property uh, in the game or, or something like that like you know we just started with our uh, uh, the guild traders uh, coming in and uh, I think those are systems that uh, really appeal to role players uh, it's definitely something we're acutely aware of and uh, want to make sure we get into the game so uh, I think it's just going to be an ongoing effort over time honestly Have shards, <laughs> but I understand. I understand what you're asking for. Absolutely. The guy in the audience shouted, "Role play shards." They might not technically have shards, but Sage understood what he meant and acknowledged that, and then didn't say anything else, <laughs> which is kind of a bad sign. I don't think it means that they don't care about role players or that they don't have any plans for role play features at all. I just think it means that there's nothing really in the works for role players right now, or if it is, it's 
so early on that they don't want to announce it yet because they don't know how it's going to work out. They actually did try to implement roleplay phasing, but they said that it was too much of a load on the mega server. Uh, here's the Reddit quote. Somebody asked if roleplay phasing or tagging was going to be implemented anytime soon, and the response from Paul Sage is, This was something we very much wanted to do. However, when we implemented the initial parts of it, it became obvious that it would be detrimental to server performance. Like many things you really want to do as a developer, sometimes things don't work out. That said, we are looking at other ways we can accomplish the same goal. That was two months ago, but two months is really not a whole lot of time when you think about all the stuff that they're working on between Adventure Zones, the Justice System, Guild Updates, Dies, Bug Fixes, They've pretty much gotten rid of all the bots in the game. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but that's awesome. There's not a lot of gold farming going on anymore. So, you know, they're busy. They're very busy. But at least two months ago, it didn't sound like they were actually working on anything to fix the phasing. They were talking about ways that they could do it. Hopefully, they've progressed from the discussion stage and they're actually working on something now, but we won't really know until they make an announcement about it. So phasing is a big deal for role players. It ha it causes a lot of problems for us, but role players have actually been really good about working around it. One of the ways that we've worked around it is by creating these large out of character role playing guilds that people join because you get phased with people who are in your guild. So if you're in a guild with a whole bunch of role players, you're more likely to find random role play is the idea behind it. They also help for coordinating events and stuff like that, and just keeping in touch with the roleplay community. So someone who has done a lot of work towards negating a lot of the phasing issues is Haloran, the guild leader of Prelude. And we have an interview with him coming up right now. Welcome to the show, Haloran. Uh, let's just have you start out by telling us about the guilds and the roleplay that you're involved in on the Daggerfall Covenant. Thanks for having me. My name is Haloran. I am currently the leader of a guild called The Prelude. I am lead counsel on a IC alliance called The Pride of the Covenant, and I'm one of the officers in the Covenant Collective, the Out of Character RP Guild in the Daggerfall Covenant. I've been RPing for a few years now. It's something I really enjoy doing. I also write on occasion, and uh, yeah. Nice. I like hearing about role players that are also writers. You're just sort of always honing your craft while you're playing. Yeah, I actually got into writing because of my role play, where, um, you know, you spend so much time in game talking about your characters, and, you know, you're in a guild that has a forum site, so it's only natural to start actually writing about things going on in storylines, and um, my interest in writing kind of grew from that. So how'd you get your start in role playing then? Years ago, in a game called City of Heroes, there was a guild that I wanted to join called the Urban Legends, and they happened to be a role-playing guild, and I had never really RP'd before. Like, I knew what it was, but I just never really engaged it in any consistent, you know, on a regular basis. So, my wanting to join this super group, because I thought the name was cool, is literally what got me in a role play and they kind of showed me the ropes and I was really awful at it and I've just <laughs> progressively gotten better I guess over time that's awesome yeah I've, I've heard that the role play scene on City of Heroes was amazing it was really active um I still find myself feeling pretty nostalgic about it you know where a lot of people were wanting to be active and, and contributors and it was a lot of fun Nice. So the main issue that we're going to be focusing on today is phasing. I've released a short video that sort of describes phasing and the problems that it presents for role players, but I just wanted to know your thoughts on it. Um, would you agree that it hinders random role play? I think it absolutely hampers random role play. In a traditional MMO that has like a number of servers, usually in either an official or an unofficial capacity, a server gets designated as the role play server. So if someone comes into a game and, you know, they want to be a part of the role play scene, they'll find that server and, and go there. So if you go to Tavern A on that server, you know that anyone in that 
server that wants to go there is more than likely going to find whoever's there and that allows a community to create hubs and it just really allows for people who aren't as you know a lot of different people are more shy about finding random role play or really introducing themselves and they would just rather stay in character and you know just kind of move in like that but with a game like this where it's just one big server a lot more out of character coordination needs to happen before that random role play can be found and that takes a lot of the variety and spontaneity that most MMOs really offer in our RP community yeah definitely I totally agree I mean I think one of the main draws to MMOs for role players is the idea of being in a living breathing world full of other players who are also in character and if you don't have random role play then you don't really get that you just have I mean, it's like Tamriel is real, but it's only real in these little bubbles when I roleplay with my guild. Yeah, it's something that's really surprising to me, because, like, um, this is my first Elder Scrolls game, but I know lots of players who have played Skyrim and Morrowind and all the other games, like, for hundreds of hours on their own. So they're really looking forward to playing a game that's in an MMO environment and allows for that sense of immersion that, they would hope to find in a single player game but only expand on that in an MMO and it was really confusing to me that they would kind of miss an opportunity like that out of the gate by not by not allowing role players to find themselves easily oh for sure i mean i think Zenimax should be a little more concerned about this issue the role play community might be small compared to the rest of the gamers, but a lot of times the role players are the ones that you get the loyalty subscriptions out and they stick around for a while. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's kind of interesting because Zenimax is one of the first MMOs or first companies that I've seen and have really tried to highlight and emphasize some of the community fan art and writing and things with like the Tamriel Chronicle. And they do that, I think, like once a week or so. So for them to embrace those segments of the community by you know really trying to highlight some of the things that are going on you would think that they would you know also kind of reward activities in game by the same people that they're trying to highlight by allowing them to find you know each other easily through role play yeah and i think Cinemax is interested in role players i mean they coordinated with tesso rp before launch to do a role play contest and gave out prizes and stuff and I've actually talked to Jessica Folsom, the community manager at Zenimax Online, and she said to me, her words were, role players have a special place in my heart, which I think that's true for a lot of them over there, or at least they're interested in supporting the role play community. Um, Paul Sage has actually said that he wants to create a system where role players can reward each other for good role play. Although I have no idea how they would implement something like that. I would be pretty impressed if they pulled that off. That's actually news to me and, and pretty encouraging as someone that is trying to establish, you know, a real sense of community in, in, in SO. Yeah, for sure. I have a quote here from Matt Fyror, and this is in response to a question about whether or not roleplay phasing was coming into the game. And he said... This is something we will be working on. No promises, we have a lot to do, but yes, we want to be able to better support role players. Um, I think it probably was said with a lot of sincerity. From what I can see with their upcoming updates, like they actually are responding to the community, like the changes that they want to make to veteran ranks and stuff. So we're in another MMO might have something like that, and it's really just to kind of appease an audience, I think, you know, he's saying that with the intent on actually following through on it someday. But it's kind of an interesting situation because you release your game, Elder Scrolls Online, in the same window as another game that could also foster an RP community like Wildstar. So you really only have a small window to prove to role players, like, look, this is a home and this is where you will be considered in our development plan. So that window if it isn't closed already for a lot of people, is steadily closing. So I think it's something that they should try to prioritize more than they may currently be doing so. Yeah, I definitely agree. 
you know, a lot of role players have left the role play community because they're under the impression that there's not any role play in ESO, which you and I know is not true. But there's so many role players out there that just don't know about TesoRP.com. They don't know about the OOC community guilds. And they're not seeing other role players around because they're all phased into different instances. 100% agree. Um, it's kind of funny because I'm traditionally someone that is not really like a part of the community. Well, maybe not a part of the community, but I kind of keep to myself in my own social circles. And the problem is that, you know, SO presents to a, a you know a casual role player with the instancing and how difficult it is to find role play and the added set of steps and, and commitment that you need to be a part of the community, it really made me want to try to come up with ideas on how I could try to offer solutions to people because, you know, I also complain about those things and they're, they're a big issue for me and what I feel could, you know, negatively affect the community in the long run. So I figured, well, if I'm going to complain about it, I may as well try to do something. So I've been trying to make steps in that direction. Very nice. So what are some of those steps? Well, um, I was a part of an idea to create an IC alliance in the Daggerfall Covenant. Um, there's a few other guilds involved. And um, the original person that started it up ended up actually moving to another game for a lot of the reasons that we've been discussing. So I, I tried to um, kind of keep that momentum going. And the result of that was me and a few other guild leaders came together and created what's called Pride of the Covenant. Um, I created an engine site and kind of wrote up a, you know, kind of a mission statement of sorts and kind of created a, an R, like an RP event to get people to come out where my character would kind of talk about the plans of the Covenant or, or the Alliance from an IC standpoint. And the, and the goal for it from my perspective in an out of character sense was to create something of a network where different sorts of guilds and individuals could come to this IC alliance and have an easier time finding role play or being a part of storylines or bringing their own storylines to a group of people that are pretty like minded and want to find a way to get around some of the pitfalls of the mega server and the difficulties of finding role play. So we talked about this a little bit before, but uh you came up with a really interesting way to find random role play. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Specifically in the Pride of the Covenant, I came up with an idea to um, actually use member notes as a way of announcing role play. So if me and some of, pe some of the people from my guild were looking to role play in the Dusklight Inn, that's kind of... Um, a hub I've been trying to promote for the Pride of the Covenant Alliance. If I was going to go RP, I would type in the guild channel for that alliance, um, you know, that I'm RPing there, and this is the location, and then I would post that also at my member note. So if someone is currently online and they see that, you know, they're then notified like, hey, if I if I wanted to go RP or find random RP or just take part in stuff in the Alliance, I can travel to that person. And then I'm, I know for a fact that I'm in the same instance as them and then I can just go there and then I can role play. But it, using the member notes also has a benefit for people that log on after that announcement is made because you log on, you look at the roster for Pride of the Covenant, and then you can look at the member notes and say like, oh, this person is RPing here and that person's RPing there. If I wanted to go to those locations, I can just travel to that person. And there isn't really a need for a lot of out-of-character communication because it's all kind of straightforward and understood. So I could just log in, see that someone's at the way rest in, and then just travel to them and go there and, and know that whatever role play is going on is happening there. Yeah, I really like that idea. I think that all the OOC phasing guilds should use that. Uh, I'm definitely going to start promoting that method amongst the Ebonheart Roleplay Guild, for sure. It just seems like the most instant and convenient way to get involved in some quick, random roleplay. Well, it's good to hear that you guys are figuring out a way to work around it. I think that the roleplay community has been very resourceful, considering our limitations. It's really worked out for us so far. Um, it's been really good for people 
who are a little more shy about finding random role play, or they would just kind of like to see what's actively going on and then wading in. They can kind of log in, see who's presently role playing or at least advertising that they're role playing, and then just travel to that person and be in the same instance as them and then just kind of show up. And it's pretty similar to experiences in other MMOs where there's just like, you know, a traditional server. Um, it's really worked out for us so far. So, how do you feel about the state of roleplay in the Elder Scrolls Online in general so far? Um, it's interesting to me because I'm generally someone that roleplays in a relatively small circle. Um, I like to do storylines with my guild and things like that. And this game is really my first attempt at really trying to put myself out there in a community and involve myself in that capacity. So maybe it's just my newness to that perspective. But um, I actually think people in general could try to be a little more proactive about the RP that they're either seeking or trying to get involved in. Um, I'm no one special by any capacity or means in terms of creating storylines or getting people involved. I just try to say, like, hey, I'm, I'm doing this over here. And... More often than not, people will kind of show up and take part in that. And while that's really great, I would love to see other people do that. It's a really small amount of effort that I think can go a long way to creating a sense of community that a lot of people that are either thinking of leaving or have already left were probably looking for. Absolutely. I think the best thing that anyone can do for the roleplay community is aside from just role-playing, is to make people aware of your role-play and your events and your storylines. And then people know that there's stuff going on and that they have prospects, they have options of different storylines that they can get involved in. So to you role-players who are listening to this, if you have role-play going on or a storyline, you should announce it on tessorp.com. You should send me a message or post it in the rumor mills so that it can get on my Rumors of Tamriel thread. Just do everything you can to spread your roleplay and get more and more people involved. I mean, the more people that play, the bigger the world is and the more immersive it is. I think the roleplay community is off to a really good start. We have some really passionate people involved and some lore experts that have been playing since Arena and Daggerfall, and some people that have been role-playing on MMOs for 10 years, 15 years. But I think fixing the phasing issue would go a long way towards helping out the role-play community and uh, giving it some longevity. I definitely agree. Um, you know, it's, it's like any MMO launch, I guess, where... Around launch, there's a, a lot of people, and then a lot of them move on after they've either gone through a good portion of the content or for whatever reason. But from what I've seen in the past few weeks, the population is really starting to level out, if not increase. And also, role play is actually starting to be more found randomly. Um, like I said, I don't know if that's a product of Zenimax doing things behind the scenes to put people in guilds together or whatever reason, but... It's been pretty encouraging to see. I like the trend that, I like the direction that it's going in, and I would do everything that I could to further promote that. Very nice. So I think I'm going to ask this question of everyone who comes on the show, but if you could change one thing about the Elder Scrolls Online, and it could be anything, your Akatosh, <laughs> uh, what would you change? Oh wow. Um. My response to that would probably lean more towards gameplay than roleplay, surprisingly. I think I would want some form of engaging, dynamic, randomly generating content that would allow for a player's sense of immersion to kind of be satisfied. Like, I think part of their revamp of the veteran system should incorporate ways for seemingly daily activities to have an actual impact on the land or you know the alliance war or something like that where it's not just like okay update nine came out so there's this new zone but i know once i go through this zone i'm done that content and i'm just waiting for the next update i would like to see a system that 
kind of randomizes the content that it can generate, but not in a necessarily boring way. I know that's a pretty tall task, but if I was Akatosh, that's <laughs> what I would create. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Someone on the uh, Tesla RP forums was commenting on those little mini events that you see around the world where two sorcerers are fighting or a merchant is getting robbed by bandits. And they were saying that it would be cool if they would expand on those events a little bit, uh, maybe turn them into quest chains or something like that. It would just be sort of a neat little throwback to the other Elder Scrolls games where you have spontaneous quests just kind of fall into your lap and grow from there. Absolutely. Um, I'm hoping that the justice system kind of expands on that. Yeah, I think that's what I would want the most. Either that or... Hmm. In terms of keeping in, in tune with the overall community in Elder Scrolls games, at least in a PC sense, I know a lot of people make mods and things that really kind of flesh out and expand on games. And I would always have loved to been in an MMO where players can create missions and quests and, and things kind of like how some other games that have come out that have things like that. I would really like to see that in Elder Scrolls Online as someone that likes to DM and like coordinate storylines and things like that. I would love to have a tool to where I can make some of these DM events that I do actual gameplay things that can happen in the game. Like that would increase my sense of immersion a lot. So if I was Akatosh, I would make that as well. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, if they want to reward role players, I think a great way to do that would be to create some kind of system where they can appoint storytellers or dungeon masters who have the power to uh, spawn NPCs and create small instanced areas for events to take place in. I mean, I do a lot of dungeon mastering with my guild too and you know it's always in emotes when anything is happening and we just use our imaginations which is great but it would be cool to actually have the tools to create real gameplay events absolutely i mean i think over time of doing rp events like that i've become so ingrained in that, that idea that it didn't even like dawn on me that i would want that to be something I could create in the gameplay sense, but if I could move heaven and earth, the two moons, and everything else to create something that I wanted, that, that would be it. Well, before we go, is there anything that you wanted to announce to the roleplay community? It could be literally anything. Um, To people that have come to Elder Scrolls Online and have since moved on, I would encourage them... Um, especially after update three when you know the dies and everything have come out that they give it another chance um the community has really started to even out um a lot of people are doing some really cool things and i, I think if someone was missing out on an rp opportunity or they thought that more could be going on that if they came back now this would be a really great time for them to get involved and, and find things that may not have been going on Oh yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think the roleplay community has uh, developed a lot. The guilds have grown and the storylines have progressed a lot more. There's way more going on roleplay-wise now than even just a month ago. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people were leveling characters and, and things like that, so there's always going to be that, that window, I think, in a new MMO's launch where... A lot less time is generally committed to role play because people are actually playing the game. But um, as people get into the veteran ranks and, and start looking for other things to do, I see more and more role play taking place. And I've been busy enough now, I still haven't hit level 50. <laughs> like, I've been doing so much role play. It's like, wow, I, have to, I really have to set aside time just to actually play the game. So um i don't think i'd do anything that fancy to get that much rp going on on a consistent basis and anyone that was that left the game because they couldn't find rp i think they'd really be able to find it now definitely well thanks so much Haloran, for coming on the show it's been great having you it sounds like you're doing a lot of good for the daggerfall covenant so i'll see you on the battlefield spill your guts <laughs> you can try you can try <laughs> well thanks again for coming on the show man it was great 
Absolutely. Um, you can have me back anytime, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. We probably will. Well, I really enjoyed my interview with Hor, and it was a lot of fun. I We're definitely going to have him on the show again. He, he's a better speaker than I am, that's for sure. So in the description below, there's a link to the out-of-character phasing guilds. Uh, if you haven't joined one of those, I highly recommend it. Tesla RP is also a great website just because it serves as the central hub for role-playing in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you haven't joined it already, I would definitely recommend doing it. It's, it's good to know what's going on in the community. You know, it gives you options of things to get involved in. So I think that pretty much does it for this episode. I'm going to wrap up by having a character exercise every episode, I think. And you guys can respond to this question in the comments on the Tesla RP site. It, you can send it to my inbox, whatever you want. The question is, if your character was suddenly turned into a werewolf, how would they react and handle it? Would they worship her scene or would they reject him? If your character is already a werewolf, how do they feel about her scene? And do they revel in being a werewolf, or do they hate it? I'll read off my favorite answers in the next episode, and then pose another character exercise. Thanks guys for watching, I really appreciate it, I love the roleplay community, you're great, I'm super thrilled to be involved in it, and I mean it's just such a passionate group of people. And this game, despite the phasing issues and stuff, this game really is a great game for roleplaying for a lot of reasons. I'm blabbering though. Peace. Thanks for watching the show. In closing, here's a recording of my girlfriend smashing my toe with a chair. Can I make it bigger? You should, yeah, you oh. should also sit up properly. It makes a big difference. <sighs> and you should put your face real. Oh! oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> That'll be funny to listen to.